he was just the nicest person. Jenny Long's shown a lot of good stuff in this change oh up my here. Goodness. That's just not picking the ball up. So. If you're a Tigers fan, I just want you to know that I am not making fun of your brand new shortstop hobby or bias. I just want you guys to keep in the back of your mind that you're going to see some of the worst swings you've ever seen watching hobby or bias play baseball. But for the most part, I think that this is a fantastic signing. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into today's MLB recap. What's going on, everyone? It's Fuzzy. We're going to talk baseball today. Obviously, this is MLB recap. I'm not sure where my brain is heading today. I'm a little bit stressed out because there is construction happening two feet away from my house they are digging straight into the concrete so I'm gonna try and get this video done ASAP and in one take so first and foremost before we talk about Javier Baez I want to talk about a very surprising trade Jacob Stallings who was really good in the shortened season of 2020 and he won a gold glove in 2021 this dude just got traded from the Pirates to the Marlins in exchange for Zach Thompson and two minor league players so Jacob Stallings he is 32 years old and and he has the most defensive run saves of any catcher since 2019. And he has a 333 on base percentage over his last 154 games. So overall, he is pretty solid. Now, the Pirates, they're getting back Zach Thompson, a 6'7", 28-year-old who had a 3.24 ERA and a 3.6 FIP in his first 75 innings. He was a rookie last year for the Marlins. Now, I just want to mention that sources are saying that the most likely candidate to replace Jacob Stallings as the main catcher for the Pirates is Roberto Perez, or as I call him, Birdo. You know, he's been with Cleveland for almost, what, a decade now? It's going to be sad to see him go, but he is going to be fantastic for that Pittsburgh Pirates rotation. They're a little bit young, so maybe he can bring some experience because, to me, he did so many great things for the young staff with Bieber and Plesak and McKenzie. So that was the Jacob Stalling trade in a nutshell. Let's go ahead and talk about Javier Baez signing a six-year, $140 million deal with the Detroit Tigers. Every Everyone was spamming hashtag Correa to Comerica. I thought it was going to happen. It just made so much sense considering they need a shortstop. AJ Hinch said that they were going to come out and spend a ton of money, and they are. And also the fact that they were best buds, AJ Hinch and Carlos Correa. They had lunch a few days ago, but ultimately the Tigers settled on Javier Baez, who has a 13.3 F4 since 2018 and in 2021. He had 31 home runs, 18 stolen bases, a 116 WRC+, and he had six defensive runs saves. He is going to be a stud for the Tigers. Now, of course, his ceiling is not as high as Carlos Correa, but he's still going to get the job done. One of my biggest annoyances with the 2021 Tigers was their defense at shortstop. Zach Short, he was decent, but the offense just was not there. So now that they have Javier Baez plugging in at shortstop for $140 million, I mean, if we look at Corey Seager, he got $325 million. The Tigers now have money to go spend on other bullpen pieces. Maybe they grab a bench bat or two, a starting pitcher or two. Hinch tried to warn us that they were going to be making trades and signing guys, and they traded for Tucker Barnhart. They signed Eduardo Rodriguez, who was a big-time starter, in my opinion, and then they just grabbed Javier Baez. They are ready to compete in the AL Central because there's not really a top dog aside from the White Sox, and the White Sox, for whatever reason, they just don't play their best versions of baseball when they're playing against the better teams, so they're looking to improve, but the Tigers, they're not waiting around. The Guardians have not done anything. The Royals haven't done anything. The Twins, I mean, I know they just signed Byron Buxton, but he was going to be on the team regardless. To me, all of the reports saying that he was going to get traded, I wasn't believing those. So let me know in the comment section down below, what do you make of Javier Baez going to the Tigers for the next six years? $140 million. Now, one more thing I forgot to mention. I just looked at my script, so it reminded me that Javier Baez will have an opt-out after the second year. So let's say everything implodes. Spencer Torkelson, he's not the guy that we think he is, along with Riley Green and the Tigers. They go 60 and what, 96? I don't know the, the correct math right now, but let's say the Tigers, they're playing Plan completely falls flat and they're not good. Javier Baez can opt out after the 2024 or 2023 season, I believe, and he can kind of choose what he wants to do at that point. Moving on over to Jan Gomes. He signs a two-year deal worth $13 million with the Cubs. And I'm not sure if Wilson Contreras was made aware of this because he tweeted out plane emojis. Does that mean that he is literally on his way to Disneyland and the plane just landed? Or is he on his way out of Chicago because they just signed Jan Gomes? Maybe. I mean, I I don't know what this could mean, but I don't think that Wilson is going to go anywhere considering that the CBA meetings are happening right now. There was actually a bad report that 
it, it only lasted 30 minutes. We'll talk about that more in depth maybe in a second video. But Jan Gomes, he could plug in as the main catcher and maybe Wilson is the DH going forward. That would make a lot of sense. You could save his legs because I believe that he's a better offensive player than he is a defensive player. So Jan Gomes, $13 million for the next two years. Alex Cobb, after a resurgent 2021, is leaving the Angels. He reportedly, I'm not sure if this is official just yet, signed a two-year deal at around $20 million with the San Francisco Giants. And so losing Kevin Gosman is a big time blow, but Alex Cobb, he was terrific with a 3.76 ERA and 93 innings. So that is a little bit high, but it's not horrible. And it might actually be deceiving because he had a 2.92 FIP, which is actually elite. And he had the highest chase rate of his entire career. So before the season started, I said that it was a bust of a trade. They were going to regret it severely, but I look stupid. Alex Cobb was really good a season ago, and I believe that he's going to get even better with the Giants, especially considering their stadium. Now, let's go ahead and stick with the Angels because they tried their best to replace Alex Cobb, and they did so with Michael Lorenzen on a one-year deal worth $7 million. I mean, if you were going to spend $7 million for one year, why would you not just spend the extra three or four and go grab Alex Cobb? This doesn't make any sense to me, but the Angels are intending to use him as a star. Pitcher. And now the Angels have the two best two-way superstars. I wouldn't call Michael Lorenzen a superstar, but the two best two-way stars in Major League Baseball because Lorenzen, he can play outfield. He's actually pretty fast. He's a decent hitter and he can pitch. Although the last two seasons have not been good to him as he has a combined 4.88 ERA and a 4.01 FIP over his last 65-ish innings. So this is a chance for him to prove himself and maybe the Angels use him as a bullpen guy. Maybe they use him as a left fielder from time to time. I have no idea, but he is a versatile player and I just think he's a lot of fun to watch. Moving on over to Kirby Yates. If that name sounds familiar, that's because a couple years ago, he was probably the best relief pitcher in all of Major League Baseball, but he had a few injuries with his pitching arm. He just signed a two-year deal worth $8.25 million, and I think he can go up to $13 million after incentives. But from 2018 to 2019, Kirby Yates was downright unhittable. He had a 1.67 ERA and a 14 strikeouts per nine with 53 saves over 123 innings between 2018 and 2019. So he was ultra reliable. He was disgusting, and I'm very excited to see what he does with Atlanta. Maybe he's a three ERA guy and 11 strikeouts per nine. Even if that happens, that is going to be of great help to Luke Jackson, especially if they end up playing the Dodgers yet again in the playoffs because Luke Jackson, he is stinky. I mean, he is self-admitted that he is not good against the Dodgers. Something about that team, they just get his pitch repertoire and they see the ball really well. So Kirby Yates is a big time welcome for Atlanta fans if he can actually pan out. Now, we just talked about the Dodgers. They made a signing as well. They are bringing back Daniel Hudson, who is on the team a few years ago. He gets a one-year deal for about the same money as Michael Lorenzen, $7 million. This guy has reinvented himself. His first 10 seasons in Major League Baseball, he was at about an eight strikeouts per nine, so still good, but not the best. Over the last two seasons, he has a basically 13 strikeouts per nine, so he is disgusting. He was really good for the Washington Nationals in the first half of 2021, and then he kind of fell off in the second half as soon as the Padres traded for him, so maybe he can be really good yet again for the Dodgers. I guess time will tell, but that pretty much does it for today's MLB recap. We talked about Jacob Stallings getting traded to the Marlins in the fact that Roberto Perez is most likely going to replace him. Javier Baez signs a six-year deal with an opt-out after the second year, and if he completes it, it's $140 million. They don't get Carlos Correa, but Javier Baez, he is not a bad consolation prize. And yes, he's going to take a few swings that you're thinking, what was he What was he doing? Does he even know how to play baseball? But Javier Baez, I believe that he's going to be a four to five war player for the next few seasons for the Tigers. A welcome addition, in my opinion. I'm going to hate facing him as an AL Central fan because you guys know my team is the Guardians. But aside from that, Jan Gomes, Alex Cobb, Michael Lorenzen, Kirby Yates, Daniel Hudson, they all found new teams. Thank you guys for watching. And also, thank you, Baseball Gods, as well the concrete gods they stopped doing construction as soon as i sat down to record so yeah kind of a weird video i wasn't on top of my game today i'm gonna just throw that out there right now i'm kind of tired from all the last few days either way i'm gonna go take a nap i'm gonna get some coffee stay safe out there and i'll catch you guys in the next one